Mark, 3620 uh, victory against Newcastle of the day, what did you make of the performance? Um, I thought we were very, very good uh, for large spells of the game. Um, I thought our attention to detail and our energy was very, very good and you know, I thought we uh, well, I thought we put a very, very good team yeah. uh, to the sore for, for large parts. But there's obviously still a part of the game where we've had a you know an off spell and it's something I need to look at. Yeah, um, is it the would you say it's almost the perfect bounce back from the York result as well? Um, especially that first half where you did put on a pretty good attacking display. Um, I think if we if we put into context the last three games and if we break down both the Whitehaven game and the York game um, and we put them the good parts of both together, I thought that's what we saw for the first 55 minutes. Um, and then we've we've had a <laughs> we've had a period of 14 sets where we've touched the ball twice, and within that, been penalised five times. And I've had a chat with with the referee down there, and you know I, I'll I'll look at the video again uh, and have a look at them penalties. But I, I thought some of them were very very harsh. Do you know the three tries in the second half? Would you say they're quite comparable to what's happened um, earlier on in the season with Bulls potentially? When they've conceded one try, a couple follow after that. Do you think it was pretty similar today? Uh, no, no, not if I'm if I'm being honest. No, I mean the one the one that I'm most disappointed at is where the the barge over on the line. Yeah. Um, one of the kicks is just an outstanding kick, and and you know the winger uh, Jack Johnson there is very very quick and he's outpaced you know defogging Johnson and, and scored the try. I can I can wear that. That's a team that's desperate, playing hot and trying to you know trying to make something happen. And and you've got to you've got to admire their execution with that. So I'll, I'll take that one. The one where the ball goes up in the air, Dave fucking Johnson catches it in the air, gets tackled in the air, drops the ball, and then the referee puts his whistle to his mouth and doesn't give the penalty and gives a try. I just again. I'll look at it again, you know, but I uh, I just couldn't fathom that one out. So, you know, I personally don't think that was a try, but um, I'm happy to hold my hands up if I'm not. Yeah, clearing Gill and Deck Patton had a great partnership again today. Um, how important will it be going forward um, to reach your aspirating goals um, that they continue with this form? And you have a try scorer as, as good as Kieran Gill. Yeah, yeah, they need to be on form. You know, they're, they're very pivotal on that, on that left edge, but I thought it were a team performance today. I thought it were an outstanding team performance. Uh, for the vast majority of the game, by the vast majority of the players, uh, you know, really, really happy with with the contribution that, that the vast majority made. Any thoughts at all on the sending off? Uh, if I'm honest, Keith, I, di I didn't see what started it. I, I think everybody in the ground saw how it ended. Yeah. But um, you know, I've had a word with with Tom, and I, I won't tell you what Tom told me happened. But it's mm -hmm. you know, uh, a man getting it in a certain place is always a little bit touchy for us men. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's what. Allegedly happened, but again, you know. As far as you're aware, did he say about the ball before fighting, or did he say the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the well, it, castle well, half back off? Uh, he sent, uh, when I spoke to him at half time, he, he sent two people off for throwing punches. Right. Um, you know, what, what led to Tom throwing his punch, um, you know, when, when I've had a chat with him, um, I, I don't think there's any man in the world would accept. Uh, I'll, I'll put it that way, and there's a, there's a region of your body you don't like, you know. Yeah. Another man hitting you in, but um, you know if that's the case, then we'll have to look at that, and I'll speak to the, you know the powers that be at Leeds, and um, Tom's going to have to cop it because you know, no matter what's happened, he's, he's obviously done wrong. He's put his hands up at half time and apologised to the boys, and uh, you know we move on. Why was Steve Costley absent today? Is he injured or just rested? Um, I've took I, I, I took a decision this week. Um, Steve's been struggling. Um, he's, we we think he's got long COVID. Uh, Steve had COVID uh, three or four, uh, well, maybe six weeks ago actually now, um, and ever since he's had COVID, he's really, really struggled, um, you know, with with his lungs and, and his lung capacity. Uh, we've done some checks on him, and it's nothing to worry about. It's just a case of having to push through it. Mm -hmm. When you expose him, you know, out, out here, and he's starting to beat yourself up a little bit because he's getting exposed because of the fatigue. I thought I had to make a decision uh, for the. The best team, you know, for, for the better of the team, sorry, um, and for the better for Steve as well. So um, I had a really good chat with him, um, and just a mark of the man that Steve Crossley is. Um, he took it on the chin. He, he wasn't happy about it whatsoever, but he understood, uh, and he's put his hands up to play reserve grid tomorrow. You know, so for for the club captain to say, I understand, but I, I want as many minutes as I can in the reserves to try and play my way through this issue that I've got. I just think shows exactly what a character Steve Crossley is. Mm. And, and, and a very impressive or very enthusiastic display. No, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very 
Uh, anyway, Thomas Doyle. I mean, uh, um, uh, confident. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. yeah very confident. Despite yeah, as a confident I'm character as Thomas Doyle. But um, what I've tried to do the last few weeks, you, you'll have noticed, is try and spell him. You know, we, we we all know that Thomas Doyle can do 80 minutes and and at a decent level as well. Mm -hmm. I tend to feel that Thomas Doyle's at his most dangerous when the other team's fatigued. Uh, you know, so we're trying to give him that little spell either side of half time. Um, and I thought when he when he came back on the field, he really steadied us down and uh, and got us going forward again. Which uh, you know, Tom, Tom's a very very good player and he's very highly thought of in this club. Any worrying injury knocks at all? Uh, no, you'll you'll probably notice that uh, Jordan Bowles didn't go back out for a second spell, and again he's got a little niggle. I'm not going to tell you what it is because. Um, you know, I'll, I'll keep that in house, but he's got a little niggle. Uh, could quite easily have gone back out there. Um, you know, so it's nothing serious. But again, you know, we, we've got a weekend off, and then we've got two games in four days. So um, the, the whole thinking behind that was just to, uh, to to get everybody through as healthy as we could. Sure. And against another side that started the day on the same points as you, and you were what three points behind at the start of the day, the, the players. That's pretty important, play, isn't it? Yeah. Keith, we, I, I keep saying it, every every game that we play is an important game um, and every win that we get is an important win because we work for the Bradford Bulls and that's you know that's not being disrespectful to any other club. Uh, you know, we all care passionately about this club and, and we want to get this club back on the right track. So um, it's a little bit of a you know monkey off the back getting getting a win out here at Odso with, with everything that's been said about our form at Odso and you know um, I thought the support you know on the, on the terraces were outstanding today and, and give us a real good energy so um, you know, we're, we're under no illusions, it's not the perfect performance, um, you know, and we're going to keep searching for that perfect performance, but I think you'll see um, Whitehaven plus York uh, put, into, put into practice for a, a decent amount of that game today. Mm. And with, with Dewsby coming up shortly as well, I mean, that really gives you a chance of getting back on the heels of that play. Yeah, yeah, Dewsby's a bit down the track, uh, you know, so we go to uh, we go to Witness on Thursday night after the Challenge Cup and then we go to Featherstone on, on Monday night on Premier, so, mm -hmm. you know, they're two really, really big games and really big challenges as well, you know, there's the difference in the in the field on the Thursday night and then, you know, we all know what a quality side Featherstone are, so, um, I'm going to give these boys, you know, the weekend off uh, for the Challenge Cup, I'm going to encourage them to have some time away with the families and, you know, maybe taking the Challenge Cup or whatever and, and I'm going to do the same and then we'll regroup after the Challenge Cup and, uh, and have a real good attempt at them two games over the uh, Jubilee weekend. When is Featherston? Is that two weeks down the track? No, we play Thursday night at, uh, at Windus and then we play the, Monday, the, the Monday. It's the Monday. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah it's, it's it should have been on the Sunday. But so it's that's eight days Monday. after the, the, the you know, 1895 Cup. It is, yeah. Do yeah. you want to see when that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not bothered, I hope we go. Armour and Song at each other. And, uh, <laughs> no, you know, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, it'll be a quality game with two quality teams, so uh, we're the best team. Mark, you've got okay. like two, a week or two, is it, off now? Um, what will they give you the chance to look at after you come back from this weekend? Uh, everything, we've got to look at everything, Aaron. You know, like I said, it's not a complete performance. Um, we were hoping for a, a full 80 minute performance. and. I think they've had a real good dig for 18 minutes. What I like is that the character's still there, so it's not a drop off and you know people people saying that oh the balls drop off after a certain amount of time we can't get back. We've pro proved again we can. Uh, I need to look at that that spell of about 15 minutes where, as I say, there were 14 sets in the game and we had two of them and one of them were made an error. So uh, I need to look at why that was. Um, if I need to have a chat with you know the officials and, and things like that, I'll do that in the correct manner through the re correct procedure. Uh, and if I need to have a chat with some of my players about yeah. you know, some of their actions in that, I'll do that as well. How would you rate that first half in particular um, in regards to your time here as, as head coach? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was very good. It was very good and it was, uh, it was pleasing to see you know, a lot of the things that we worked on you know, um, being put into practice and, and coming good. But as I say, you know, us coaches are never, never fully happy and we, we're always aiming for you know, that little bit better. So I was delighted that they got to do it at Old Sol in front of our, you know, our loud and proud, passionate fans and, and give them something to cheer about. And you know, next time we're here, we'll endeavour to make that uh, you know, 75, 80 minutes rather than 60s.